this has been my first not positive experience on culture review. We just left from the border and we are super late, we are more than one hour late. I'm gonna have two hosts in Oslo. I have one who's gonna host me only for tonight. He's half Italian apparently, even if he looks, he doesn't look Italian, he's blonde and I don't know. And he lives in a peninsula or maybe it's an island on the other side of the city center. So we're gonna get there by boat, I think, but he told me that he's gonna pick me up at the station when I arrive. And let's see, I, I don't know. Goodbye, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yesterday my host came to pick me up at the station, which was super nice from him. And then he took me to the place where he works to eat the pizza. And by the way, he turns out to be um, an Italian who is living here since 10 years. But he's 100% Neapolitan. And after the pizza, he took me to a language cafe powered by mundolingo.com, I think, which was awesome. It's, it was the first time I went to a language cafe. Basically, they give you stickers, flag stickers, with the flag correspondent to the languages you speak, and you stick it to your t-shirt so everyone knows what language they can speak to you. <laughs> And then after that we slowly arrived home. He lives in Nesodden, which is a peninsula exactly on the other side of the city center. So we had to take a boat to get there, 25 minutes by boat. This has been my first not positive experience on culture review. Fortunately, uh, we were already agreed that I would have stayed only one night there because he couldn't host me during the weekend. But the host was awesome, super generous person. I was so grateful to, to meet him, to hang out with him, very funny and everything. But let's say his standards of hygiene are very different than mine. And that was really the only problem that I had. We were both sleeping in his room in two separate be uh, beds. I was sleeping on a mattress on the floor with no clean sheets at all. And he gave me, he was very nice because he gave me his blanket because it was thicker, but without changing the sheet of the blanket. And he sleeps in his underwear usually. And also his personal hygiene is not really up to my standards so I felt very 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 uncomfortable tonight and the smell in this room was also 
I have a very sensitive nose, unfortunately, so I could smell that it was very dirty. The room was cluttered in things and he has been living there in 10 months. I think he never cleaned the room in 10 months. So also because of the smell, I couldn't sleep so much last night. And I mean, I've been staying there only a few hours, but it felt like forever. <laughs> like the longest hours the longest night so i'm sorry about that but i i will have to leave a neutral reference in couchsurfing you can either leave a positive reference or a neutral slash negative reference mine will be neutral because i mean i enjoyed staying with this host he's a very nice person maybe he would not be my best friend he is He's definitely a very generous and nice person, but I would definitely never stay at his place anymore. So maybe later I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna write in this reference. So maybe I can encourage you to write more negative references when it's the case. This is Udo, my host here in 
in Oslo and I just came here like two hours ago. We ate something, had, had some... Oh, this is also my host. Baby. <laughs> so we just decided to go for a Fahrrad. Uh, he's German, so we're speaking German. I'm a little bit confused now. Yeah, bicycle tour. Bicycle tour. Because outside is such a nice day. And so, yeah, he loves uh, the bikes. I love them too, so I can't wait to go. Oh, soll ich kommen? Nice. <laughs> we don't have so much time today. Maybe tomorrow we will go again. But I'm so happy for this bicycle tour. Oh my god, why am I so ridiculous? mich toten. Willst du mich toten? Ja, ich will töten. Töten. <lacht> oh mein Gott. Weißt du was das, das Schlechteste war? Wenn die Autos gehen und du atmest die Luft und genau. du spürst, dass die Luft ist so, so schmutzig von den Autos. Weißt du, was ich meine? Ja, aber und Norweger du, du, grüßt den höchsten Anteil an Elektroautos. Soll ich ja Englisch sprechen? Okay, aber so viele sind nicht elektrisch. <lacht> uh, Norway has du, the ja. biggest average of electro cars. The highest average. Ja. Whatever. I And know. I have the worst English in this video. <lacht> <lacht> Alles, was wir auf Deutsch sagen, soll ich untertiteln. <lacht> also, okay, but we can talk English. That's yeah, it's better be if we speak yet, English. So. So, yeah, you know, when, when your breath is so thick and you have to breathe with your, with your mouth open, like completely open. Maybe it's not the case for you, but for me it was the case. And you have autos, like a line of autos in front of, of you. It, yeah, of cars, sorry. <laughs> That's what Deutsch. Oh, and you breathe like this with your mouth open. It's like smoking cigarettes while you are running. You know what I mean? I guess smoking a cigarette would be worse. Yeah, absolutely, it would be worse. But the feeling is not so say nice. It's like, yeah, <clears throat> like that. Landscape. Yeah. So what you see here on the right, that's the Oslo Fjord. And you can mm -hmm. see up to nearly up to Dröbak, what is at the end of the Oslo Fjord, the inner Oslo Fjord. And it's, uh, the two fjords are divided by Ness on. And to the left side, you see the Bünden fjord. Mm I scared. don't need to smile at the moment. <laughs> Kein Problem, ich schneide alles danach. 
schneide alles raus halt. Wir kommen jetzt hier die feinsten vorgekochten Kartoffeln da rein. Müssen genau 13 Minuten vorgekocht werden, weil man sieht halt so, Kartoffeln im Durchschnitt eben doch recht kleine Kartoffeln. Die dürfen nicht 20 Minuten kochen. Norwegische Kartoffeln kochen sowieso schneller gar als deutsche Kartoffeln. Die kommen jetzt da rein. Sehr interessant. Ja. Udo, danke für die, alle deine Informationen. Ja. Ähm, jetzt. Das Restgemüse, mhm. das verteilen wir jetzt in diesem Ding. Relativ viel von der norwegischen Kohl, Rouladen, Rübe, auf Wunsch einer gewissen Mar Dann Roller, den Rest von den Pilzen. Da soll ich das mal machen. Ich nicht gut, dass ich jetzt hier Ach, ich mach das nicht machen. Ich komme das nicht. Und ich mache das. Man könnte auch ein bisschen dabei lächeln. <lacht> oh, jetzt bin ich dran. In Italien wird sowas mit den Fingern ausgeübt, habe ich gelernt. Mit den Fingern wird die Sahne auf dem Auflauf verteilt. Wirklich? Mit denselben Fingern, mit denen eben auch der Käse gerieben wurde. Mhm. Für Toilette waren wir auch zwischendurch. Aber es schmeckt gut. <lacht> schmeckt super. Was ist das? Das ist ähm, Setter Römme. Setter Römme. Setter Römme. Ja, ja, saure Sahne. Ah, okay, wirklich? Jetzt noch Käse. Jetzt kommt noch diese Käsegeschichte da drauf. Ich finde, das sieht gut aus. Das auch. Sieht wie eine Pizza aus, eigentlich. Ja. Oder Lasagne. Für die hungrigen Radfahrer. Mhm. Ruf damit ins Ofenrohr. Das ist ein Rohr. 200 Grad, meine lieben Blog-Leser und Zuhörerinnen. Hast du schon im Fernseher gearbeitet? Ich war schon der Fernsehkoch. Mmh. Was ist das denn hier leckeres Poldi? Ist das was für dich? Ist das hier leckeres Poldi-Futter? Es riecht eigentlich sehr gut. Was ist der Name von diesem Teller? Das ist ähm, Udos Spezialgemüseauflauf mit viel Käse. Ja, sehr viel Käse. Jetzt gucken wir mal, ob Maria das überhaupt schmeckt. Das wissen wir ja noch nicht. Oh mein Gott, ich glaube. And now some details about my previous couchsurfing experience. He didn't write much in his profile, uh, which is something I usually don't like a lot, but he has quite a few pictures and he has a lot of references. He has more than 160 references and uh, I think 90% of them are from surfers. So apparently he likes to host a lot at his place and they are all very enthusiastic so I decided to trust my gut and accept his offer. Let's see, this is a bit of a high risk experience because I don't even have the right address, I just know like the, the general area where he lives because he's gonna take me there and it's a very isolated place so if something goes wrong yeah, I, I, 
I guess I'll have to figure out what to do, like knocking around door by door uh, in the houses in the neighborhood or something like that. But this is just to think about the plan B now in advance. <laughs> I'm quite sure everything is gonna be fine. I still have a lot of trust in people and in humanity. And because he has so many great references, I'm pretty calm about it. I must say he has a very peculiar sense of humor and he keeps answering to my questions in a very humorous way so he doesn't really give a proper answer. I'm asking him some questions from time to time just to have more information about the logistics and stuff like that and he doesn't really answer me. Like now for example I asked him are you coming to pick me up from home or you are already in the city center? And he's like, I will come from Syria, like from another planet.